Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. This time we've got part two of a look at oscillators. I'm not quite sure how many parts there's going to be yet, but there'll certainly be at least one more, possibly another two. Um, maybe more than that, we'll see. Um, this time we're going to take a look at using uh, logic gates and then also op amps at producing those valuable oscillations. So let's get started. In the previous uh, video, part one, we made use of a NOT gate, a Schmidt trigger NOT gate in this case, uh, to use to, to create uh, uh, oscillations uh, and a nice, simple, straightforward circuit. Uh, other gates can also be used for that. With this video, we're going to make use of a, a NAND gate. And if we configure a NAND gate like so, with the two inputs to the gate tied together, we effectively create a NOT gate. If you watched any of my uh, digital electronic series, you're probably aware a NAND gate is um, pretty much capable of being configured to, or a number of NAND gates are able to be configured to pretty much form the function of any other gate. It's a bit like a, a universal gate, I guess. I've sometimes heard it called that. So we'll have a look at that circuit, but uh, we'll also have a look at um, a NAND gate version of the circuit which has a Schmidt trigger and see if we can see any differences in the waveforms. So let's go and have a look at that on the bench. Here on the breadboard we've got the uh, 4011 which is a quad NAND gate. Got the two inputs to the gate tied together. Uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor down to ground from there and then we've got this 100k resistor connected between the output of the gate and the two inputs as I said tied together and this replicates uh, a NOT gate um, so it's very similar to the second gate on, on previous video but if one of the reasons for showing you this is if you get um, if you're using this chip it's got four NAND gates on it and if you don't need all four you can turn one of them into, into an oscillator should you need it now that's just straightforward CMOS uh, NAND gate um, but just for completeness sake here I've got 4093 which is also a quad NAND gate but it's a it's a quad NAND Schmidt trigger so you get the Schmidt trigger effect on the output that that very um, uh, abrupt switching if you like that we've um, talked about on previous videos and apart from the fact that's a 4011 and that's a 4093 uh, the circuits the circuits are identical allowing for the tolerances between the components so 100 nano and 100 kilo ohm resistors there uh, circuits are identical so let's now have a look at the screen grab which is here and I've paused the display so you can see the difference because if I don't do that uh, it'll um, it'll just drift along because we've got different um, different frequencies but essentially the yellow trace at the top is coming off the um, quad uh, NAND gate and the blue trace is coming off the Schmidt trigger and we've got quite a difference in frequency I've actually put measurements on the table at the bottom there so the top uh, yellow trace is about 954 Hertz and the blue trace is about 257 Hertz something like that um, so they are quite different and I think the other important point to note is you can see the Schmidt trigger effect in the very square waveform that's coming off the off the blue trace which is the the effect of the uh, the Schmidt trigger of course snapping between uh, the two uh, logic states so there you go that they're two uh, very simple versions of an oscillator but it is interesting that uh, the both CMOS chips, both set up identically, um, apart from uh, the fact that that they just obviously got different um, different components, same values but different components on each one, and even allowing for those tolerances, there's quite a, a significant difference in frequency between the two. There we go. So that's the first uh, of the uh, oscillators for uh, for this uh, this video. Now we're going to look at uh, using an op-amp as an oscillator. Um, now there are dozens of op-amp oscillator circuits and I'm just going to cover a, a couple of the very basic ones if you want to get into it a little bit more. There's lots of resources out there on the web that will uh, 
uh, a simple Google search will bring up uh, plenty to keep you happy for a while. So the circuit we're going to look at first um, is fairly straightforward. Uh, essentially what you've got is the output of the op amp um, uh, is fed back into the um, inverting input and that, that feedback circuit um, essentially is what creates the oscillation. So if you just for a moment visualize the output as being high uh, the 100 nanofarad capacitor will charge through its associated 100k resistor and when that voltage reaches a certain threshold um, the amp will flick and the output will go low and that threshold is effectively governed by on the left hand side you've got a couple of 10k resistors dividing the supply voltage in half but then you've got a another 10k resistor and it's a 10 to 100k resistor that give you a sort of a 9 to 1 or a 10 to 1 ratio and so when the voltage on the negative uh, input um, rises above that threshold the op amp state flips so the output is low and that means the capacitor begins to discharge through its 100k resistor when that threshold is met um, it flips back to high again and so hence you have uh, oscillation so when we look at it on the uh, breadboard and connect it to the scope we'll have a look at the output on the right hand side there on test point one but we'll also have a look at the um, what what's going on uh, at the top of the capacitor there at test point two uh, on the breadboard then um, relatively um, straightforward layout I think that's um, fairly similar to the to the layout on the on the schematic there uh, I'm using a TL072 uh, FET input op amp here it's a dual op amp I'm just using the lower of the two and uh, you can hopefully see the 200k resistors are side by side on the right uh, the little blue square is the uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor 10k resistors are on the left split between the supply rails the green jumper on the extreme right is the output that's going to that'll be going to the yellow trace on the scope and the blue jumper um, at the bottom we'll be going to the uh, blue trace on the scope where we can observe the activity on the capacitor. OK, I hope that makes sense. Let's go and have a look at that on the bench. Here we are with this layout on the bench then as I've just described um, a circuit exactly as you've just seen on the slides. Uh, this is the uh, output going to the scope's yellow trace. This is the output it'll be on the blue trace let's first of all have a look at the output um, which you can see there and uh, I've probably got a slightly dodgy connection somewhere which is causing a bit of flickering now just touch the IC there that's cured that so we can see um, got a reasonably good square wave output the um, duty cycles a bit um, isn't 50% it's a bit more than that but we could tweak that if we so desired with the resistor network um, and we're getting a frequency of uh, round about 100 and just try to look at it properly yeah uh, 171 hertz at the moment something like that with 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor now scope is coupled DC so this is the zero so you know to be fair we are producing positive going pulses uh, we're not producing a uh, a waveform either side of the line as I mentioned before when we were looking at um, using the uh, logic gates as uh, as oscillators so if we switch on uh, trace uh, blue trace there um, I've got that set to AC coupling because it would have been way off the screen in a in meaningful shape but you can hopefully see that isn't exactly a straight line it's very close but it isn't exactly so that's the charging and at the point as we described earlier where the charge reaches a point where it's equal to the um, voltage over the, the positive going input of the op amp uh, the output flips uh, the capacitor discharges a lot quicker as you can see here than it charges and then when, when we get to a point um, that's now below that uh, division point uh, we uh, start the cycle all over again output goes high capacitor begins to, to charge and so the, the cycle repeats so hopefully um, you can see um, that works well. Now I'm going to just reconfigure this circuit very slightly. Um, so we'll just have a look 
at the new circuit on the slides and then um, then we'll come back to the bench and have a look uh, at the performance of it when it's configured a slightly different way. Okay so version 2 then um, at a quick glance probably looks very similar. Um, it sort of looks simpler on this circuit diagram because I've uh, left out uh, the two 10k resistors which were acting as a, a voltage divider between the positive supply and uh, and ground. Now what we're doing is we're, we're driving the op amp with a positive supply and a negative supply and ground is effectively uh, a point in between the, the plus and the minus and I'm going to create those using the previous two 10k resistors. So we're going to be connecting um, the bottom of the 100 nanofarad capacitor to, to ground rather than to, to negative. Um, so again we'll look at test point 1 and test point 2 as we did um, on previous amp and a quick glance at uh, the breadboard it does look incredibly similar. What's changed is the, the blue jumper wire that moves that goes to, from uh, across the screen there from the end of the, na the 100 nanofarad capacitor across to the uh, 10k ohm voltage dividers on the left um, that effectively lifts the um, uh, connection from the capacitor from the negative supply rail to a, a midpoint and the two 10k resistors that are at uh, 45 degrees they're effectively dividing the supply voltage and producing a, a midpoint and so I've had to move the oscilloscopes ground from negative supply rail to that that midpoint which is what that white jumper is on the, the bottom left otherwise um, circuits pretty much identical so let's go and have a look at that on the bench okay so here's the uh, second version of that op amp circuit and uh, it's as you saw from uh, previous slide been able to almost uh, and create exactly the same uh, situation just by moving a couple of wires. Um, the only the only big difference now is that the white wire here uh, is the oscilloscope ground connection, which now needs to be attached to that uh, zero volt point in between the the two 10k resistors, which I didn't include in the previous circuit, but they are effectively what's producing the the zero volts point in between the supply rail. So. Um, Let's have a look at the output on the scope that you can see here and um, got that same dodgy connection, sorry about that, it's just a poor connection on the breadboard I think. So first thing to notice you're still in DC coupling but now you can see that zero line is here so we have definitely got an output that's swinging positive and then swinging negative and if we want to up the supply voltage so let's go up to let's say that's about roughly 10 volts supply voltage uh, we, you can see we're swinging at either side of the line I'll just drop the scale in down a little bit you can see it there um, and unsurprisingly if you turn on um, test point 2 the blue trace uh, apart from the fact that we've got a higher supply voltage so we can just reduce that down uh, it is possible probably not easily to see on here that isn't a straight line that charging but the charging curve operation is um, almost identical um, which is what uh, gives it its um, its oscillation if you like um, so important point really to note here is that uh, by using a split supply rail we've now produced what really is a true waveform it goes positive here and goes negative there so that is definitely oscillating um, either side of the line Okay, well there you've got uh, um, some examples of oscillation, logic gates and also op amps and uh, for the first time in this series we've actually reached the point where we've produced a genuine waveform that actually goes either side of the, uh, of the zero line using that op amp. So hopefully that's uh, all made some sense. Um, look out for part three and uh, in part three we'll take a look at yet more oscillators and I suspect there's going to be um, probably a part four maybe even more but we'll see there are a lot of things to get through so thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video